37, verses 1 through 7 reads, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee des the, the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who pr uh, prospereth in his way, because the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. I just want to tell you, don't sweat the small stuff. Amen. Don't sweat the small stuff. Right. Here, David is admonishing and saying, fret not thyself because of evildoers. David, in all of his catastrophes and all of his antics and all of the downfalls that he had, he was even strong enough to say, fret not thyself because of evildoers. And you would think that David would be the last of God's children to be making that proclamation, seeing as though he tried so much of what the evildoers were doing. David didn't have that spotless, or he was without blemish. David was one who had tried a little bit of everything. But God had said, David, you're one after my own heart. And, and I believe that somewhat made him stronger. Not the sin that he committed, but the knowing that God would always receive him back if he would just humble himself and repent. All right. And maybe that's a lesson for you and I on today. You've tried a little bit of everything. You've been there, done that. Made some mistakes in life intentionally and unintentionally. But every time you found yourself in, the, in, a, in a wicked device, God was there to restore you. He was there to remove you from that situation and to comfort you and let you know that you were still his own. Amen. And David here is encouraging someone that is not as strong as you and I may be. He's saying, fret not yourself because of evildoers, and neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. And I told you, whatever you get caught up in self, it's very easy for us to be envious of evildoers. Right. When you get caught up in flesh, Flesh always attracts stuff. That's, right. That's something you can always remember. Stuff is what gratifies flesh. And when you get caught up in flesh and you refuse to slay that nature in you, then you're only attracted to stuff. And when you look at stuff, again, there's two ways to achieve stuff. One way is to serve God. Because the scripture has let us, let us know that if you seek ye first the kingdom of God, yes, all this stuff shall be added unto you. <laughs> but the other way is hooking and crooking, shaking and baking. You can go into the streets and you can be conniving and cunning and crafty, yes. just like the father of the world, the demon possessed, yes. the demon oppressors. You can go out and hustle and get you a whole lot of stuff. So it's easy for the believer to get caught up in flesh. And that's why I'm admonishing you to do like David. If you get caught out there, don't stay out there. Always remember that if I repent and come back to my senses, I come to the Father and say, Father, forgive me. I made a mistake again. Would you please have mercy on me? 
And you know God is faithful and just to forgive you of all of our sins. And, and we ought to be thankful for that. And, and that's just a little something that we ought, to re, we ought to replace our flesh with. Instead of trying to be in the flesh and trying to achieve so much stuff, you ought to be thankful and you ought to have some rejoicing in knowing that you've got a God of all of our salvation. You've got a God that will deliver us from uh, 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 our sinful nature and place us into spiritual growth, knowing that there are some greater things in life. You know, I, t I say it all the time, there's a difference between happiness and joy. There's a difference between like and love. Amen. See, we always think the devil is tempting us with things that are opposite of God. But no, he's tempting us with things that are closely related to what God has for us. You know, like feels like love until you know what love really is. You know, you know uh, 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 just getting along is good, but loving is godly. It, there's a difference between it and, and happiness and joy. They sound alike and they seem alike because happiness will put a smile on your face. But joy will put an ever-present uh, help in your heart when you have joy. See, you can have happiness, a smile on your face when things is going good. But you can have joy in your heart when things is all going wrong. When, when things ain't right, when everything is coming down on you, you can sit down with Jesus and it's something about a still, quiet voice. He'll lead you through his word and he'll comfort you and give you joy. That's why you see me crying so much sometimes. It's not about what I've read. It's about the God that I know. And every once in a while, he tugs on my heart. I can feel him on the inside. And he says, son, everything is going to be all right. You may not feel 100%, but I'm going to tell you this 50% or 60% that's in you now, just dedicated to the work of Christ Jesus. And I'll make up the difference in your life. And, and, and he said, just like having a thorn in your side, I ask him to remove the thorn. But he says, don't worry about that thorn, son. My grace is sufficient. You can walk with a limp. Just know that I'm going to get you where I want you to go. Son, you may have an impediment in your speech, but don't worry about how they look at the words that you say. Just make sure they see the word, and the word is Christ Jesus. It's not about what you say, but it's all about what's in the word. And I know that's a mind twister for some folks, but you got to understand that when you're listening to the preacher, you've got it mixed up. You need to be listening to the Holy Spirit because everything that that preacher messes up, the Holy Spirit is going to correct it. And you know how it is. The preacher might stumble over some verse, but it's God that says, that's my child. And if I can let him preach, surely you can listen to me teach you. Because everything that he preaches about is only going to come to pass by me, not by the preacher. And I guess I say that now. That's why the preacher can't lay hands on you. Amen. Amen. Because the power is in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And, and if you've got to be healed by the preacher, what you going to do when the preacher ain't there? Yeah. What you going to do on Mondays? Because I only see some of you on Sundays and at Bible studies. And I know how this world operates. Every once in a while, you need a healing on those other five days of the week. And if the preacher ain't there, a phone call ain't going to do it. I suggest you talk to Jesus. I suggest you get into his word because it's in his word that he's going to tell you, don't fret. Don't worry. Don't look at evildoers. But get on about your business. And I, I'm, my, I'm your father. I'm going to make sure everything is all right. While you're traveling up and down this dark and dismal world, don't look at stuff. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Yeah. Go ahead on and witness for me. Go ahead on and tell somebody that's suffering about me. Because when you do these things, I'm going to give you the stuff. Have you noticed that you got some stuff in your life that you didn't pray for, but God still provided it for you? He knows what you need. 
even before you can ever ask. And that's what I love about Christ Jesus. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I, I'm spiritual sometimes in the morning. And I'm thinking about all that God has done for me. And I'm asking him to lead somebody across my life, Father, that I can tell about such a great salvation. And then when I get up out of my bed after prayer, then breakfast is already on the table. Then I've got gas in that car and, and I've got a destination to go to. And I just realized that God has already provided for me. My grace is sufficient towards all my children. So just don't sweat the small stuff. And then in, in order to not sweat the small stuff, not be wary, or not be dismayed, or be, be dismayed about the small stuff, let's look at what the scripture tells us. And then I noticed this in scripture as well. The, David only took two verses, one and two, to tell you about the envious and the, and the unrighteous preacher, uh, people. And then he turned right back around and took 38 more verses to tell you the goodness of God. And what God can do for you. And all that does for me is goes to show that God don't spend a whole lot of time on troubles and mess. He gets on to the good part and he's got 38 verses when you read it in its entirety. Go all the way from 3 to 40. And you'll find out that God had a plan. And he had it laid out for you. And he just wants you to know don't worry about anybody else. Just think about what I am to you. And then I'll provide for you. And if you want to make this life easy, if you want, it, it's three steps, I believe, three or four steps here in this scripture that'll help you make life a lot easier for you. Because some people struggle through life. But when you look at three things, in verse three he says, for one thing you ought to do is trust in the Lord. Then when you look at four, he says, delight thyself in the Lord. Verse five, he says, commit thy way unto the Lord. And then when you go down to seven, I mean, yes, seven, he, he closes it out and say, rest in the Lord. If, if you do these things, you won't have to worry about evil doing. Because the first one says, if you trust in the Lord, you can't trust fully in the Lord, looking at what somebody else has. You can't trust in the Lord, looking at what the devil has provided for somebody else. I, this is simple preaching now because I want you to understand it in its entirety. He says, trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. He says, trust now, trust me. And, and, and while you're trusting in the Lord, I don't, I don't want you to think that he means just sit back and do nothing. But he says, trust in the Lord and do good. A whole lot of folks will sit back as Christians and as believers and say, I'm trusting and I'm waiting on the Lord. But then again, you ain't doing nothing for the Lord. You've got to do something for the Lord to even let him know that you on his mind or he's on your mind. Uh, it, it's, it's something about a Christian that will just sit around all the time and just sit on their stool of do nothing. And then just wait and try to get all they can. And then they'll can all they get. And then they'll sit on the can. Amen. But when you do that, you'll realize that your can's got a hole in it. Everything that you set on, it'll just fall out the bottom. You ain't going to be able to hold it because we, we also have to understand, why would God provide so many blessings for you? Why would he give you this good health? Why would he give you these great riches? And you're going to get stingy and keep it for yourself. What do you need about the knowledge and the wisdom of God if you're not willing to share it with somebody that doesn't know him in the pardons of your sin? I, I'm just picking on you right now, but I'm being truthful with you. If you really want all this money that you think you want, you've got to learn how to utilize that money. That money will kill you just as fast as the devil will because you will get it and it will spiritually kill you. You will get to where you don't want to tie. You think you better than everybody else? You won't show up and be on time for nothing? And you'll dedicate you, yourself to none of God's business. But when God blesses you, he says, go and do good. And, and then I also got to tell you, you ought to pay your tithes and your offering. Because in order to do good, you got to have something to do it with. 
And if you sit on what you have, God will sit on his vision for you. As a matter of fact, it can't be done. And, and I guess since I'm at home now, I tell you, many have asked, what is the vision that the preacher has? The vision is that we got to get some finances together. In order for a preacher to fulfill the vision of God, there has to be some provisions. You've got everything that takes place now cost a little something. And you as the body of Christ have to be able to give it and willing to give it. So the vision is... Get a little something so you can do a little something. Uh, and you don't have to come by the office and ask me about that because I'll be telling it to you in a different language when we get to the other side, when we get over into the office now. But trust in the Lord and do good. And when you do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be uh, fed. You know what verily means, don't you? Verily means truly. Truly thou shalt be fed. Now we know the word of God never lies. But when he says truly thou shalt be, be, be fed, you ought to joy, jump for joy then. Because what he has done here is taken you further from the first two verses. He says fret yourself not because of evildoers. But then he turned around and said truly thou shalt be fed. When you're out in this world and you're hustling and scheming, you might end up with something. But then again, you've got to hustle so hard about it. Then you, you won't realize that God will provide for you for little or nothing. Whatever God asks you to do, it's just a drop in the bucket compared to what he has done for you. And if I can make that plain, look at what he did to save you. He gave it all up for you. He died so you might live. Now you tell me who will die for you. Who's able to die for you. Who has stepped down from their authority? Who has given up their seat of authority to come down in human form and make sure that you're able to receive salvation? And then on top of all that, he's offered it to you free of choice. He said, I give it to all that will come. Whosoever will call on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. It ain't about how much you give in order to do it. It's just about giving yourself. And what are you worth without Christ Jesus? I just told you we all came from mother dust, so we ain't nothing but we're all as filthy rags in the sight of God. So when you surrender yourself to him, what have you given up? What have you given up? A, a life of lies? A life of cheating? A situation you couldn't get yourself out of? Trouble on every hand? What have you given up in order to have Christ Jesus? I don't know about you, but that's the best investment I've ever made. I, I gave myself to him. If that's all it takes for him, you ought to be running down the aisle saying, what must I do to be saved? Because I ain't lost much. Because I know in myself I'm just a wretched man. What no good in me? And all I have to do is trade it in for a new life, a new, a new way of living, a precious way of living. And God has added value to my life because when I was, before I had him, people hated to see me come. But now that I've accepted Christ Jesus, I'm a light unto all the world. I possess wisdom now. I possess grace now. I possess favor now. Now, I, now I'm worth something. And it's all because of Christ Jesus. Then he says, go ahead on and delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Now, now, now that's, that's a tricky one for us. Because when he says he'll give thee the de desires of thy heart, a whole bunch of us wouldn't wreck the stuff. He, but he says, I'll give you the desires of your heart. But, but, but listen what he said first. Delight thyself in who? The Lord. Before you ask for anything that's on your heart, you ought to delight yourself in the Lord first. Don't ask for stuff and then say, I'm going to delight myself in the Lord because he gave it to me. Because when you do that, you have, you have stepped above. You, you've put the cart before the horse. When you delight yourself in the Lord, he will do what? Change your heart. He'll, whenever you delight yourself in the Lord, that's when you're going to get to crying and say thank you. That's when you're going to understand that everything that I have that's good for me comes from a God that I serve. And when I serve this God, you won't start act, asking for stuff anymore. When you serve God and you know who he truly is, you're going to ask for some more love. You're going to ask for some more compassion. You're going to ask for some more wisdom then. And then it's going to go right back to the other scripture. He's going to say, now when I get 
give you these things. All this other stuff is going to be added. That's why he says, delight yourself in the Lord. And then thou shalt be fed in, uh, delight thyself in the Lord. And then he'll give you the desires of thy heart. Because once he fulfills the desires of your heart, you'll find out all that other stuff really ain't worth it. And I, I know you're saying, well, he's keep talking about all that stuff, but we got to have it to survive. But God's going to provide for that for you anyway. Amen. He's going to take care of that kind of stuff, but he wants you to have something that the world can't give you. That's the kind of God that we serve. He's going to give you something that the world don't want you to have, and he's going to give you something that oh, when you get possessed with it, then you're going to be able to do some things that the world can't do. You're going to be able to stand in the midst of trouble. You're going to be able to think your way through some situations that other men are confounded behind. I, I, I think about now this situation with these rest room and, and 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 you know what came to me and I always say the world will make a fool out of you I was thinking about they trying to say we need a men's restroom a women's restroom and a, a what a, a unisex we're gonna say it like that and, and and they get everybody's fighting and arguing about that and the men I don't want no women in here and the women don't want no men in the restroom and all this kind of stuff here and you know what came to my mind or oh, well let me say it like you know what came to my spirit my restroom at home has been unisex as long as I've been in it. So why am I going to go out here and argue about a restroom? Look, here's the situation. It don't make no difference to me. Y'all might be different. It doesn't make any difference to me who goes in and uses that restroom. You just keep your hands and your eyes to yourself. You ain't supposed to be. I got a problem in the men's restroom if I go in there and men looking at me. I, you know what I'm saying? I ain't worried about all of that. I, I can't see why I have to go out and pick somebody to vote for, and their argument is we're going to get the restroom situation fixed. Ain't that embarrassing, y'all? You got a whole country to run, and we talking about who's supposed to use the restroom. It, it's still preaching, y'all. I'm just letting you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Follow Christ. Trust in the Lord because it don't, don't listen to the world now. Be not envious of this world because what the world is doing is making a fool of itself. Amen. Amen. And he says, commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust, in the, trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. It's a whole lot of stuff that we want in life. There's a whole lot of stuff going on that we need in life. But the Bible says if you commit your ways unto him, he'll bring it to pass. He, he will bring it to pass. And, and what I'm telling you now is all this simple message is saying work for the Lord. Follow after Christ Jesus. Do good for Christ Jesus. And he's going to provide for you. He's going to commit you commit your ways to him. And he's going to bring everything else to pass. All you have to do is get a mind for Christ Jesus. Follow him. You don't, it ain't about how you look and how you act. Just commit your ways unto him. Whatever you're suffering in life and, and whatever's ailing you and holding you down, don't worry about it. His grace is sufficient. Just commit your ways unto him. And, and while you commit it unto him, delight yourself in the Lord. Be happy about what God has for you. Even if it don't look Look right to you at that time. Be happy when you're in Christ Jesus. Who wants to serve a God when all of his children have sour faces? Who wants to serve a God when all of his children are mad and upset and frustrated? That's why I refuse to get out here and argue about a restroom. I, I refuse to go out and do all that kind of stuff there because I'm embarrassed. Because in my heart, I know everybody needs to use the restroom. So let them in there. You just, like I say, keep your hand and your eyes to yourself. It's going to be all right if they offend you. Wait till they come out. Then you go in. Everybody's talking about my rights as being invaded. What rights do you have in here? No matter what a person believes or thinks about themselves, you, you, ought, to, you ought to be respectful enough to let them take care of their business. You're going to be mad at them if they start doing it in the middle of the street. So let them people alone and go on about something that's responsible. Go on to something that's spiritual and mature. Go on and tell those folks about Jesus. Because if you tell them about Jesus, co coincidentally, you know that'll fix everything, don't you? 
men will stop acting like women and women will stop acting like men if you seek first the kingdom of God if you commit your ways unto him if you delight yourself in the law and tell him about the word of God we won't have these problems in life amen, amen. let me move on let me move on and then he says and it shall it be brought to pass righteousness as the light and judgment as the noonday you know what judgment as the noonday mean Judgment at the noonday means that's the brightest time of the day. That's when the heat is on as well. In the summertime at 12 o'clock noon, it, it, that's about the hottest part of the day. Amen. That's how judgment is going to be. It's going to be at the toughest time in the world. And, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light. The righteousness of God is going to be the light. But it's going to be as, and, and thy judgment as the noonday. God is going to expose all of it. And what he's going to do, I believe he's going to do, is he's going to come and let all of his children know he's going to be the light and he's going to bring judgment. And he's going to be shaking his head at all of his children that wouldn't delight themselves into the, to him and, and, and those that would not trust in him fully and those that, that would not commit thy ways to him. He's going to be a light. In that time of judgment. And he's going to do it in the noonday hour. He's going to set you out in front of all mankind. And he's going to say, why did you turn from me? Why did you not walk in my delight? Why did you not trust in me? Because again, only people that can delight thyself in the Lord are those that are in the Lord. The only ones that can trust in the Lord is the one who believes in the Lord. The only ones who can commit their ways unto the Lord are the ones that have committed themselves unto him. It's only by Jesus that you can serve him. And that's because he hung, bled, and died for you that we all might have right in the tree of life. And then he goes on in verse 7 and says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Rest in the Lord, and I'm closing, and, pay, and wait patiently for him. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. That's another eye opener. And that's what I'm closing with. You rest in the Lord. Don't you know that everybody that works need a good vacation? Amen. God is not saying when it's all over with, I'm going to give you rest. God will give you rest in the midst of your situation. He'll give you some peace in the midst of your situation. And, and you know it's sweet rest in following the word of God. I, I don't know about you, but I really don't believe that I would die from stress and a heart attack. Because, and, and I thought about it. When I started preaching, they said that's a, that's a high stress position. It is if I try to do it on my own. But if I rest in the Lord and I commit my ways unto him, that stress will be gone. All that stuff y'all be telling me, I, I ain't stressing myself out about it. Because the ways of God will let me know what's right. And he'll let, he'll let me know what's going on wrong. And if I commit my ways unto him, I just don't believe that he'll have me committed into a situation that's going to kill me, y'all. I, I, so I just beg to differ with some preachers. If you commit your ways unto the Lord, and even as believers, if you commit your ways unto the Lord, if you trust in him, if you delight yourself in him, I believe that he'll give you rest. I believe that he'll take care of you in the time of trouble. He'll give you peace in the midst of a storm. We've read throughout all of the Bible. Well, when he was in the storm, what did he do? He laid down and rest. They came to him talking about what can we do to save our life. He was sleeping, y'all. That's a message. If he's sleeping, I'm going to do just like I did as a baby. I'm going to roll up, get right next to him, and go to sleep too. Because I've committed my ways unto him. Why would he put me on a ship to kill me? And he's the one who said he loved me. And I told you, God's not trying to take your life. He's the giver of life. And, and you know how I know he loves me? Because he sent his son Jesus to hang, bleed, and die for me. And, and because he died for me, now I can live for him. It's because of Jesus that he went up on Calvary's cross. 
and, and that, that on Calvary's cross, he paid it all. And all the mistakes that I made, it was paid on Calvary's cross. All the insufficiencies in my life was taken care of on Calvary's cross. He knew that I would fail every now and then. But that's just because he's a savior, y'all. When I was bent down, he lifted me up. When I was down and out, he blessed my soul. When I was down and out, he was the one who grabbed me and rocked me in his bosom. And his name is Jesus. 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 Amen. Amen. I just again want to let you know, don't sweat the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. Commit your ways to him. Delight yourself unto the Lord. And then trust in the Lord. And then rest in the Lord. Don't sweat the small stuff. Amen.